Welcome to this video. I'm the Highlander. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, 1.24 version of the U64 streamer in this video. That's uh, a new version that's become available on March 20th in 2021. Uh, I'll be taking a look at some of the new features. Uh, there have also been some optimizations and stuff, but you can find out about those in the release notes. I've done some uh, other videos on setting up uh, streaming on the Ultimate 64 and on using the U64 streamer app. I will link to those videos in the description uh, so you can get up to speed uh, if you are unfamiliar with the, uh, with the concept. In short, the Ultimate 64 is capable of streaming video and audio to a TCP IP address. And the Ultimate 64 streamer app is a Windows app which receives those streams and displays them on your computer so that you can either record or stream the output to Twitch or YouTube or whatever you like. Now, the meat and potatoes of this update is really uh, resizing the screen. Previously, uh, as you can see here, the default size uh, uh, couldn't be changed. Uh, it can now, so I can pull this down and pull it to the side, and it'll automatically resize. Now, as you can see, it saves the aspect ratio of the original screen. What you also can see is that there are, there's a chance of getting uh, black lines to the bottom uh, or to the side, so you can just play with the size until it's uh, and, until it's perfect. Uh, as you can see, I did it like vertically and then horizontally, but you can also do it uh, both at the same time. What is good to know is that if you stop the Ultima 64 app, uh, it will save the uh, size and the position of your screen so that if you set up your streaming or your recording uh, software, you don't have to do that again uh, the next time. So it, it'll just save the information. It's not as straightforward as you think to resize. There are different strategies. If I go into the settings, you will see under image processing um, that there is a resize algorithm that I can choose. It starts off on default, but there are different ones. Uh, each one has a different uh, impact on processing, and it also uh, each has a different visual effect. For instance, the uh, nearest neighbor one, if I save the settings, as you can see, is a very crisp and very clear picture. But this also has um, a heavy impact on uh, the, the processing required by the CPU. So basically, the best thing is just to go into the settings and choose uh, the option that is uh, best for your preference. Now, if you're going to be uh, going into the settings, uh, you'll be glad to know that right-clicking now gets you into the settings. It doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's just that little bit much easier and quicker to do. One of the things uh, also is if I increase the size of the window to the point that the menu can't be shown anymore, it is hidden automatically. If I left-click, it reappears, and if I left-click again, it goes away. Also, if I double left-click on the window, we go back to the original uh, default size. Another really cool, uh, cool option is um, uh, the simulation of scan lines. Now, scan lines are a very popular thing. Uh, scan lines are simulated here by overlaying an image and blending it uh, with the display. So if I right click, if I go into the settings again, you can see scan line simulation. It's now disabled. There are two options, eight and 16 line uh, per character height. Now this may seem alien to you. It definitely did to me, but apparently there are 16 scan lines per Commodore character height. Uh, this is the original, as it says here, and it is slower. 
if I click it, scanline alpha value says something about the intensity of the blend. If I save settings, as you can see, I have something resembling scan lines here, which is, I think, pretty amazing. Again, you can go into the settings and you can and you can play with uh, with it. There's also a scan line tone. I can pick a color and it'll actually blend in a color as well. For what you would use that, I don't really know, but it's pretty fun to play with. Another option that's been added is the volume slider. I can now set the output volume of the app, which is really handy for streaming. Uh, and there's also a mute and unmute button. The last thing uh, that I want to show, uh, as you can see, I have Dolphin DOS here. Dolphin DOS programs things under the function keys. And if I now press the F1 to F8 keys, they are programmed with whatever uh, the kernel has uh, available under them. As I said, there's a couple of optimizations and a couple of bug fixes uh, in there as well. You can uh, read the release notes. I would like to thank uh, Martijn for putting in all the work. Um, it's been fun and it's been uh, intense for him, I'm sure. If you have any requests, if you have any features that you would like to see added, then either contact me in this video or uh, go into the Facebook group and send Martijn a message. Um, he notes these things down in his to-do list and then who knows in the future your feature request will become a reality. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.